Welcome everybody to the first inaugural Cook Along with Guy in Guy's Home Kitchen. Today we're making steak, the perfect steak in your home kitchen with a butter sage sauce, brown butter sage sauce. So we're going live. So I know I got quite a few people who are watching live with me and are cooking along with me, that's the point. But if you're watching this recorded in the future, don't worry, you can just follow along. Um, now before we get started, I just want to tell you a couple things. Uh, this is probably going to be about 45 minutes to an hour long. Um, and if you haven't already preheated your oven to 325, please go do that right now uh, because that has to come up to temperature before we get the steak in there. Um, even if it's a little bit before, it's fine. But go ahead right now and get to 325. Uh, I did one of these last week uh, live, uh, but I'm going to go a little bit slower. Uh, today because I know there are people cooking with me um, and have to do the steps at the same time. So, uh, you know, figure an hour. Um, now, let's, um, let's go over the hardware for today. You need your oven 325, you're going to need a pan, <laughs> you're going to need a cast iron pan, which is what I'm going to be using, or you need a uh, carbon steel pan, which is uh, just as good. Uh, either one will work. If you don't have one of these pans, uh, don't worry, just use what you got. Um, and oh, oh, by the way, um, if you have any questions along the way while we're cooking, just please go ahead and ask in the comments. You have to stop and answer them. Um, in addition to that, you're going to need a pan and a rack for when you put the steak on to put it in the oven. Preferably, you're going to want one that sits on top of something so the steak's not inside. You want up over everything so the oven can get around it nice and evenly. Um, and then you're going to want a cutting board, a knife, you're going to want a towel. The reason for this towel is because we're going to be cooking at the hottest temperature possible on the cast iron, which is going to create tons of smoke. Um, so there's a, probably a good chance your smoke alarm may go off. Mine has gone off many times when I do this. So you're going to need that when the alarm goes off. Um, and then for the software, you need your steak. Today I'm cooking ribeye. You could be cooking a filet mignon, you could be cooking New York strip, it doesn't matter. Um, the reason I like the ribeye <coughs> is because uh, of all the steaks, it has uh, my favorite part, which is the ribeye cap here. So if you, if you look at the anatomy of this ribeye, you, you can see there's this fat, there's this fat line, which is which separates this muscle from this muscle. This is the ribeye, the actual eye of the ribeye. Uh, this is the ribeye cap. There are also sometimes, most, most of the time, there are little pieces like this on the end, which is called a complexus. I always trim that off because it just gets in the way. It actually is a good, good meat, but it, it's one bite's worth, and it gets, and it gets more in the way than, than anything. Uh, I got actually two of them because I've been cooking a lot of these steaks and I just save them and freeze them and then once I get enough I'll make something with it. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is salt your meat. Now if you've already dry brined it as I suggested, then don't do that. <laughs> just, just leave it as is. But if you haven't salted anything with your meat yet, go ahead and do it. I use kosher salt to me, that's my preferred. Uh, and you're going to want to put it on liberally. So, because uh, it's, a, it's a big, thick piece of meat. The thicker, the more salt you're going to need. Um, so, go ahead and salt. We do have a question. We got a question, all right. Mm -hmm. Sage has asked, you stated to leave the steak in the fridge while salted open to air? Overnight. Uncovered or covered? Uncovered, okay. yes. Because you want, what you want to have happen, what that dry brine is going to do, like, I don't know if you can see this from that far, but this, this is a very deep, almost purpley uh, red uh, color right now, and that's because of the dry brine, okay, and the open air from the fridge. And so you can see it's all the way through, and that's what you want. If you, if you, if you just got one from the store, it's still gonna taste good. Don't worry about it, we're gonna cook it, and it's gonna taste good. I do, I do it all the time because last minute I decided I want a steak. So, um, but, but when, you, when you have time to plan and prepare, you definitely want to dry brine it with liberally overnight. I put it on, um, I use this. 
which gives it, which has little feet on the bottom, and I put that right on top, and then put this right on top of a plate, and then right in the fridge, uncovered. And what's going to happen overnight? Salt is actually going to get absorbed into the meat, and and a little bit of moisture is going to pop up and then dry out, and you're going to be left with this film on the outside, which is going to help actually with the crust development, which which is why we're starting with the cast iron to to make a really great crust. Okay. So by now you should have salted your meat, and um, it's time to start, oh, let's go finish the software. You're either going to need mayo, or you're going to need avocado oil for the searing. I'll get into that in a second. You're going to need rosemary, sage, butter, and garlic. And these are all the ingredients we're going to use for the sauce, which we'll do while the uh, steak is resting after it comes out of the oven. And another piece of hardware I forgot to mention is you're going to need a, a probe thermometer, which is what this is. Um, it's a wireless one. I'll, I'll go over that in a little bit. Or an instant read thermometer you could just stick the meat with because one of the secrets of cooking a perfect steak is actually cooking it to the, an exact temperature. Okay. My preferred doneness is medium rare. It's the most common. I know some people like it well done. That's okay. Whatever your preferred doneness is, Find out what the temperature is, because mine's 129, is my sweet spot, 129 to 131, is to me the perfect medium rare. You could go up higher at 135 to 140 for a medium, and then 140 to 145 for a medium well, and then basically anything over 150 is well done. Um, but whatever your pre preference is, that's what you're going to want to finish cooking the steak at. And I'm going to explain what that means in a little bit about finishing at the temperature, not pulling at the temperature. Okay, so I think we got everything. I got pepper, I got a serving plate and forks, I got everything we need. Okay, so let's start cooking. Also, quick note before I move over. I have a, uh, a stove cam today, which I'm really excited about because it's the first time we're doing it. So you can see a close-up shot as the steak sears. But we had a technical glitch, so when we switch between cameras, you're going to see a black screen for maybe a second or two. That's okay, just know we're going to be coming back, the, the technology has to switch cameras. Next week will be totally more seamless um, when we cook something else. Which by the way, uh, I'm thinking about cooking, um, teaching how to make fresh pasta with a simple uh, sauce or uh, risotto, which is one of my favorites, um, or even chicken marcel. So if you have a preference of one of those three, go ahead and comment what you want to do next week because I'm going to be doing something, one of those three next week. Okay? Good? Mm -hmm. Alright, so let's head over to the... And what you're going to want to do is find your... You good? Mm -hmm. What you're going to want to do is find your biggest burner. For me, it's this one. And put it on high. The highest heat you could go. Because the goal is to get this as hot as possible. And once it starts getting hot, you're going to see it start smoking. And when it starts to smoke, you're not there yet. You know, and if you're unsure, you're still not there yet. You're just going to really want it to smoke really well uh, because that's when you know it's hot. Um, typically, I, I took a, uh, a laser thermometer to it once before, and it's usually between six and 700 degrees. So that's how hot it cooks. Um, also, now's a good time to get that fan ready uh, on your exhaust because uh, pretty soon it's going to start start smoking here so um, while that's going I'm gonna get this on while it's going we're gonna switch back and I want to explain how you're gonna prepare the steak for, for uh, searing so if you have avocado oil use that the reason for avocado oil of all the oils available is because this one will get the hottest of, uh, of all the oils and you know, olive oil tastes great. That's my that's my favorite, and sesame oil is my favorite for taste. However, it doesn't get hot. So what you end up happening is when you put the oil in the pan, you have to cool down the pan, and then you end up having to cook the steak longer to get the crust you need, which is going to ultimately end in a uh, piece of meat that has more brown. I mean, you'll see at the end when we put into it, it'll have more brown than red in the middle. But what we're trying to achieve is just a nice thin layer of brown crust on each edge and as much of the medium rare possible in the middle. That's the goal, okay? 
So if you have avocado oil, avocado, avocado oil use that. If not, usually everybody has uh, mayonnaise. Use you know Hellman's real mayonnaise. Don't shortchange on some of the crappy stuff. And if you're gonna use mayo, it's totally cool. Don't put anything in the pan. And you just you just butter the you just mayo the steak like you would a piece of bread if you're making a sandwich. And that's it. Both sides. And you put it in and you start searing. Okay. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna use avocado oil. Okay. Now I'm not gonna add avocado oil until that pan gets a little bit hotter. Uh, because I want the oil to get hot pretty fast, but not burn at the same time, okay? Let's cut back to the... So I don't know if you can see it yet. It's just starting to smoke, just a hair. You should probably can't see it in the camera, but it's starting to come up, okay? So what we're going to do, what I'm going to do now is start to drizzle this with some, just a little bit like that. It's enough. Also, if you're using cast iron, I want to show you this. This is going to get just as hot as that. So make sure you always have a, a handy glove. Okay? Let's give that a coat. If there's anybody cooking at home and you need me to slow down, just let me know in the comments, okay? So I'm going to let that come up to temp while everybody else catches up. Two for risotto, all right. Well, it is my favorite. No, it is not mom's recipe. It is my recipe. Oh, the marsala? It's, it started with mom's recipe, but it's finishing with my recipe. All right. Can you, can you see that smoke come through? Very little. Is that? Up the edge. All right, here, here it really comes. Okay, so here's what's gonna happen. When I put, when I put the steak in, I'm, I got a large enough cast iron. This is a 12 inch. Uh, you can get basically anywhere now these days, Amazon, your local grocery store. This one's like 30 bucks. This, a little bit smaller one's like 20 bucks. It's, it's probably the perfect pan for any home kitchen because it's affordable and it cooks a lot of things really, really well. But when I drop the steak in, I want you to pay attention because I'm actually going to put it on one side. Because while this is searing, it's, it is also going to cool down. The cold meat is going to cool down the pan. And when I flip it, I want the pan to be just as hot for, for the other side when I put it in this side. So I'm going to put it on one side. Let it sear for two to three minutes, and then I'm gonna flip it, okay? And the goal is not to cook here. We're not we're actually cooking the steak. We're just forming a nice brown crust. So it's getting, it's getting really smoky now. I'm actually going to let it go a little sooner. You can see that's really smoky, but I'm actually going to go another probably 30 seconds and let that get even smokier. While we're waiting for the pan to warm up, why don't you guys comment on where you're watching from? Uh, I'd love to know. All right, you guys ready? Here we go. Okay, I'm going to put the steak in. It's going to get loud, so I don't know if you're going to hear me. However, what you're going to see me do is I'm going to press down the steak on the, on the cast iron to make sure we get a lot of contact with the meat. Because what we're trying to achieve is the Maillard reaction, which is when the amino acids and the proteins of the meat form a nice brown crust. So like the brown really is from sugars that, that you pull out of the meat that create the brownness. And as a general rule of thumb, brown is flavor, black is burnt, okay? All right, now it's really kicking. I hope you can see that. Guy, can you see this really heating oh, up? Yes. Okay, that's what you want, all right? So now we're gonna go ahead and put it in for two or three minutes. I'm gonna press it down. I use tongs because I don't like to poke the meat. To me, the more times you cook the meat, the more juices you're going to let out. 
So I always use tongs when I cook meat. And I prefer a meat probe because I don't have to keep poking it to check the doneness. Now I do have an instant read thermometer, which I use uh, occasionally. And before I even had the meat probe. And it works, but I just it's just one of those pet peeves of mine that I like to just disturb it as least as possible. Okay. Another important factor when you do this is you don't want to move it. Okay, I'm just pressing it down for contact, but you don't want to slide around. You you want it just to get really, really hot and a nice crust formed. And that's what's happening right now. The high heat of the cast iron which holds a lot of heat and, and the slickness of it, which gets some really great contact, is forming that Maillard reaction right now, which adds a ton of flavor to any steak. Um, so right now I can see on the sides, the brown is starting to come up a little bit, which is an early indicator for me that this is supposed to be flipping. Now if you pull it up, and you're gonna see I'm gonna pull it up, if you pull it up and it's not ready, flip just put it back down like I know I know I said not to move it and it's better if not to but there's actually a lot of room for error in cooking probably the most important thing is to not overcook okay okay you see that that's 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 a nice mahogany brown crust that we just created in I don't know in time it was at two minutes maybe a little less that's what we're going for so this side's done now I'm gonna put it back down on that side to create a crust on that side. Get my pan ready. As this is searing, you want to be ready for the next step, which is to move it from here to your pan that you're going to, and rack that you can use to put it in the oven. You don't have to put it in the oven so fast. Um, you can take your time, it doesn't matter. In fact, you can sear this ahead of time leave it out for a little bit and then put it in the oven later if you're trying to time it better if you have like people coming over or you, you just don't want to do everything at once that's another you know, little trick is we're not cooking we're just searing the outside okay tons of smoke oh, I mean, my house is full of smoke right now I'm working on upgrading my hood here uh, it's not the greatest but um, hopefully in some future episodes this will go away Okay, look at that, didn't take long at all. The reason this side went faster, the reason this side went faster is because um, the steak's a little bit warmer, okay? So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna cut the heat off, move it off the heat and get the steak, I'm just gonna use this so you can see it, on the pan here, okay? Now we gotta get it ready for going into the oven. I'm gonna slow down a little bit. I'm gonna go grab my meat probe and stick it in so we're ready to rock and roll in the oven. Um, and hopefully by this time, everybody else can catch up. Okay. So you're gonna wanna insert it into the, the thicker end. Hopefully the steak's even. You know, one, one of the things you want to look for when you're buying uh, a ribeye, or any steak really, is, um, let me cut that off, hopefully you can hear me better. You, you want to you look for, um, first, an even cut. So it needs to be the same thickness throughout, so you have even cooking throughout. Otherwise, you're going to end up with medium rare and well done, and that's not good. Um, you're also going to want to figure out your personal preference. If you like more juice and flavor, then you're gonna want a higher fat content. Um, and I'll explain the grades in a second once this goes into the oven. Okay, by now everybody should be caught up. I'm gonna put this in the oven. It's actually gonna be off camera, but by that time, we're gonna switch to the other camera. went into my oven which was preheated at 325 and is going to cook like that. I can't believe my uh, my alarm didn't go off. I cut the AC 
prior to uh, Dawn's wave, she was proactive. She had the, the thing going before it even would go up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is kind of get closer here. Can you let me know if I'm in the frame here? Um, you're in the frame. He's got a point in the phone. So what I'm going to do lower is... Lower the brightness. Huh? Lower the brightness. Okay. I'm going to set up the... Uh, well, lower the brightness, the production manager said. How's that? A little bit closer. Okay. Closer. How's this? That's right. That's good? That's good. Okay. So, let's leave it. So, we're going to set up the cook. Okay? No cook set up. This is the meter app. If you guys don't have this, uh, you can get it anywhere, Amazon and whatever. It's a wireless probe. So, it's in the oven, but it's connected to my phone via Bluetooth, even though the connection just got lost. So, it's not my products. I don't care. Um, I'm going to set up the cook. We're doing beef. This is how simple this is, guys. We're doing ribeye, and I'm gonna set it to 129. It's all blurry. It's out of focus. Okay, whatever. Start cook. And this tells me the internal temperature, which right now is 89 degrees. It tells me my target, which we're going to 129, and it tells me the ambient, which is the oven temperature, which right now is 213, but it's climbing. And this, this probe, the ambient, just takes a little while to catch up, okay? So there's actually a really important um, piece of information here I want to share. Earlier I said you want to finish at the right temperature, not pull from the right temperature, okay? So we're gonna, I'm targeting to finish at 129. If you prefer a, bit, a different thumbness, just change that number, okay? I'm going to actually pull the steak at 120 degrees. Question. Question, go ahead. Carol said, is there a bone in that steak? No bone, mine is boneless. Uh, you can do bone, no bone. Uh, you're not going to actually get any difference in flavor. Um, it's just presentation. You know, sometimes you see those tomahawk steaks, they call them, because it looks like a tomahawk, which is the ribeye and a huge bone, which is amazing for presentation. You see it in higher end steak houses uh, because it's more expensive because of the bone. But it does nothing to the taste of the meat, which is what we're going for. So I always buy boneless because I don't want to deal with the freaking bone. It's annoying. Um, but yeah, mine is boneless. So I'm going to pull my meat at 120 because what's going to happen is once I take it out and I let it rest for five minutes, the, the temperature is actually going to continue to cook. Okay? So it's called carryover cooking. Right? So the carryover is going to raise it up probably to right around 128, 129, 130, 131. It's probably the range that I'm going to get in the doneness. You know, it's not an exact science. Uh, there's a lot of variables here, but that's what I'm going for. If I pulled it at 129, uh, it will be the perfect medium rare when I pull it out of the oven. But by the time I cut into it, it's probably going to be 138 to 140, which for me is, is too well of medium. Um, and, you know, I'll eat it. <laughs> but it's not, it's not the perfect stick to me, okay? So right now it's at 98 degrees, and it's continuing to go. While that's in the oven, we're going to get ready to uh, prep for our sauce, okay? So, butter, premium butter. This, this is one of the main ingredients of this. You know, it's a brown butter sage sauce. It's going to be poured over. I'll show you the steak, and you're going to taste it along with the steak. So, don't cheap out and get the good stuff, all right? Go ahead and splurge. Okay, so we're going to cut about... Oh, I thought I had markings on here. I don't know, like this much. <laughs> so this is this is equivalent to two sticks. That's what I did, and I cut about a third of that. So you're probably looking at two thirds of a stick of regular butter. This is salted butter uh, because I like cooking with salted butter. I like baking with unsalted butter. But that's what we're going to use for the sauce. Okay, so we'll get that ready to go. What we're also going to use for the sauce is rosemary, okay? So we're going to take two, two or three sprigs of rosemary, okay? Leave it whole, and I'm going to show you why when we make the sauce, but leave this whole, because we're not actually, uh, well, let me show you. So we got rosemary, and we got about five or six cloves of garlic, okay? Whole. The reason for these being whole is because I'm not looking to actually put that on the plate. I don't want to that to be a strong seasoning to a strong flavor profile in the sauce. I want it to be just mildly infused with it. So 
I'm gonna leave a hole and we're actually gonna cook with it off to the side. You'll see what, we'll, we'll do it, you'll see. Uh, in addition to that, you're gonna want sage, okay? I mean, how much sage, it's really up to you, uh, but the important thing is to only use the leaves. So you just take your finger and you pinch the leaf off and that's it. And you just do it to enough. I like sage. Um, if you want a piece of sage with every bite of steak, which I recommend, you do more, okay? So, hopefully, if you're at home and you're cooking right now, this is what you're doing. Also, um, what we've learned is Facebook Live is about has about a 15 second delay on it. So if you comment, it may take 15 to 20 seconds for us to see it and answer your question. Okay, so right now I have about this much. Okay, I think I'm gonna just do a little bit more. Yes. Kelly asked, what is the difference in searing than baking or baking and searing? So baking and searing is called a reverse sear. Uh, works just as well. Um, it probably comes down to personal preference. I put a greater importance on the crust, okay? So I like to cook my crust because we dry brined it. I don't want to ruin the film that we created on the steak, 108. I don't want, this is the temperature, I don't want to ruin the film uh, that we create on the steak to help and make the browning of the steak better. So that's why I sear first. As long as it's quick, you're not going to ruin the meat. Okay, but you could reverse sear, that's the term, reverse sear, which is when you actually cook the steak first to temperature and sear it last. And if you're going to do that, you got to cool down the steak first. Right? So you're going to cook it under, like so I'm pulling at 120, you're probably going to pull at 115 for medium rare if you're going to reverse sear it. And then you're going to put it in an ice bath for two or three minutes. And then you're going to pat it dry with paper towels. And then you're going to sear it. And it will taste good, OK? I just prefer it this way. But if you want to do it the other way, go ahead. I mean, it's steak. It's going to taste good, as long as you don't overcook it, OK? So we got our sage, we got our rosemary, we got our garlic, and we got our butter. And um, we got 111 on the temperature. So I want to talk to you about grades of meat real fast because it's an important part of the decision process when you're selecting your meat. Basically, there are um, four or five different grades. So the bottom, which is the one to avoid at all times, is called select. Uh, that's like in Walmart and stuff, I think, usually. Um, but that's a select grade. That's, that's the bottom. Then the next one up is choice, the USDA choice. Now choice is kind of like the most common, most widely available. Um, if you go into any grocery store, that's probably what you're gonna find. Uh, and sometimes you find the next one, which is prime. And then after that is American Wagyu. And then after that is Australian Wagyu. And then after that is Japanese Wagyu, okay? The key, there's really one factor in the different grades, and that's the fat content. So remember I said, if you, if you like it juicier and, and a bigger flavor profile, you're gonna want a steak that has more fat in it, so you're gonna look for a lot more marbling. Well, you're only gonna get so much from a choice. Like you may see certain choice steaks have a little bit more, a little bit less within a choice, and it's fine. But the best choice will never be as good as the lowest prime, and so on. So what I'm cooking is actually a prime steak from Costco. Uh, why Costco? Because I love Costco, uh, but, but also because I could get prime, a prime steak at Costco for the same price, and actually less, I just looked at Publix today, less than the choice at Publix. So I get a better grade of meat for the same or less money, so it's a no-brainer. The only thing I don't like about Costco uh, meat is that they meat tenderize it, which means they take little tiny needles and run it through a machine to tenderize the meat, and they do that with all the meat they sell, including a ribeye, which doesn't need it. Anyway. Um, that's that. So, so you know, the and also the higher the grade, the more expensive it's going to get. So prime is more money than choice, you know, in the same place. American Wagyu, which gets a bad rap. Like, American Wagyu is often compared to the other Wagyus, which is one way to look at it. But American Wagyu is better than prime, okay? 
It's just not as good as Australian Wagyu or Japanese Wagyu, which also have even more grades within that grade. So Japanese Wagyu will have A1 to A5. So not only is it a grade, there are sections in the grade. That's how fine it is. Okay? Um, so if you find American Wagyu, you know, most people are going to have like a, a, a negative look on it because it's not real Wagyu, and which is true. But I see it as better than Prime, which is better in my opinion. So if you find American Wagyu, it's fine. The difference between the different Wagyus, real quick. Japanese Wagyu is where it all started. It's the Japanese cows, they prepared a certain way. Just look it up, I'm not gonna talk about that too much in here. Australian Wagyu basically took the Japanese cows and moved them to Australia and created their Wagyu in Australia. It's the same cow, same line of cows, it's just done in Australia. So you can actually save a little money and get the, get the same quality of meat just by buying Australian. If you just don't get the... Okay, it's 120, I have to take this out. So I'm taking out my steak. Taking out the steak, um, and all you do is you just move it right to the board, just like that. And you let it rest for five minutes, okay? <clears throat> now, while that's resting, we're gonna make the sauce. So I'm going to need to switch to the other camera to make the sauce. So we're going to put it right back on. I, I don't, you don't clean the pan. You don't do anything to the pan. You keep all that flavor from the oil and the meat that came off and any little bits, which there's not too much in here. You want that in the, in the uh, pan. But you're just going to put it on like a, a medium, medium high heat. I'm going to show you that's high, that's low. That's low. That's medium. So I'm going to do it like right around there. That's going to get hot. As, as soon as that happens, you throw in your butter. Okay? And you throw in your rosemary and your garlic, just like that. Okay? Because what we're doing is we're just infusing those flavors into this meat. Now this is called a brown butter sage sauce, which means we're, we're browning the butter to give it a nutty, more stronger flavor from the butter, and we're, we're incorporating sage into it. This is a very easy, which is why we're doing this live, and it tastes really good, and anybody could do this. I mean, you see how easy this is. You just throw these three things in, you, you can move the butter around to melt it, and you can let it get a little brown. As soon as the butter gets slightly amber, um, that's the time I'm going to throw in the sage because the sage doesn't take long to cook and, and it's going to crisp up. It's going to be, you know, the sage is going to finish crispy in the dish, okay? So, if anybody's cooking live and needs me to slow down, just let me know in the comments. So, you can see it getting foamy, which is kind of the first step after the foam, after it foams out, it's going to start getting um, brown. Okay, that's it. You don't need to move it much. So, while we're cooking the sauce, the steak's resting, and that's a really important step because I'm sure I'm not the first person to tell you this, but if you cut into the steak as soon as it comes out, all the juices that you just worked so hard to create at the perfect temperature are going to be all over the cutting board instead of inside the meat, okay, in the protein, and that's where you want it, okay? So now, how long to rest? I don't know, five minutes. That's like the minimum. 10 minutes to me is the maximum because what I figured out over time is meat loses its, its um, I don't know, impact. And, and you know, it, it, it changes flavor actually when it starts to cool off a little bit. Um, so you do wanna eat it warm and hot, but you don't wanna eat it right away so that the uh, you ruin, you, you make a dry, you just work so hard to make this perfect steak and then you dry it out by cutting it too soon, okay? So here we go. This is exactly what you want to see. Let me see if I have something white. Okay, I got a white spatula because I want you to see the color, okay? See that? That's how it's like just amber right now, which means it's almost done. 
Okay, so now it's time to add the sage. Sage goes in. And at this point, we're just looking for the sage to get kind of crispy. Because by the time the sage is done, just the, the brown sauce is done. You know, and what you're going to see a lot, I'm going I'm to do more of these live videos. What you're going to see a lot is I incorporate sauces into almost, almost everything. Because that's what just takes it to the next level. Okay, this is done. This is going to continue to cook because cast iron carries over. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch over and start on preparing it to serve, okay? Okay, I don't know if you can see this from here. It is exactly 129 degrees, okay? It's not a coincidence. <laughs> I've done this a couple of times. This, I knew it was gonna carry over nine degrees at 325 because the higher the temperature, okay, the more heat retention it's gonna be. I typically like to cook this in the oven uh, 275 and let it take a little bit longer to get the temperature, at which point it will only have seven or eight degrees carry over, so I'll pull it like 122. Um, uh, but because it's a live video, I don't, I don't wanna be wasting a whole bunch of time, you know, in the oven where it's kind of boring. So, Perfect temperature, now it's time to start the preparation to serve. So you just remove your meat probe, get your serving dish, and you could do one of two things. You could just slice it up, which is what I normally do, but I want you to, either now or after you slice it, I want you to taste the difference between this piece of muscle and that piece of muscle. Okay, and then tell me what you think in the comments because it's, it's, it's amazing the difference. I, I mean, Costco sells pinwheels of just a ribeye cap, and when I see it, I get it because I love it. Um, and you can get it online too, the ribeye cap, just the whole plank of it. it it's like it's a, it's it's like the best it's the best part. Okay, so all for presentation, all I'm going to do is just slice it up like this. So if I'm serving this, if I have a bunch of steaks, I'm serving them to individuals as whole, I'll leave it whole. But if I'm serving it to have more as like a platter, like family style, people choose, I like to do this because it's easier for people to just grab a piece and eat. Plus it makes for a heck of a presentation, which you can see. Okay. So this is what 100 and 29 degrees looks like. I don't know if you can see it. How is it? It's good. The focus? So actually it got more brown than I wanted. So um, I probably could have let that pan get a little bit hotter. And if you do have more brown than this, it just means it was in the pan for too long. Okay? But this is gonna taste great. So all I'm gonna do, for presentation, I leave the ends off. I take the pieces. Line them up. Yeah, like that. Okay, there we go. I like to I like to stagger them. I think it gives it a cool appearance when um, they're on an angle staggered. And then the last thing we're gonna do, you don't have to switch the camera. The last thing we're gonna do is get our sauce. Okay. Ooh, still hot. See that? It's just heavy. So keep the rosemary and garlic to the side, and then the rest of the sauce to that side. And all you're gonna do is just spoon it on just like this, and get a nice, nice, nice presentation, color. That brown butter sauce is just going to be exquisite, okay? Put as much or as little of the sauce as you want on, it doesn't matter. Personal preference, okay? And that's it. You just cooked the perfect steak, but we're not done because you, you, you don't cook a steak and not eat it, <laughs> okay? So what we're going to do, I'm going to have, I'm going to invite my, 
my special dedicated taste tester, who's a very tough critic to the scene here, this is my son Vito. And he is going to taste it along with me, this fork's right there. You know what, before we do that, I want to show him closer. So this is the dish. Let me know if that's good. Good? Yeah. I mean, okay. it's, it's not fun. So that's what that's what that is. Perfect. Just like that. Okay? So cut it. You ready? Mm -hmm. Which piece do you want? Do you want the cap or the ribeye? The ribeye. The eye? Okay. Yeah, try that one. It looks good. Looks good? Mm-hmm. Smells good. This is the cap. Mmm. Now that's saucy, baby. I mean, that is fantastic. Holy cow. What do you think? What does it taste like to you? What does it taste like? You taste the butter? Mm -hmm. You taste the steak? Mm -hmm. Yeah, see? You still taste the steak even though there's a butter sauce on it. You get it's very both. Very tender. Very tender. And, you know, the dry brining helps tenderize it too. So that's another reason to do it. That's not the reason I do it, but it is a reason. And then you just take a piece, a little sage on there. Even better. Get a sage in every bite you take. I mean, it's perfect. Perfect. Hey, if you were cooking along with me live, I'd like you to uh, send, go to uh, Guys Home Kitchen on Facebook and share your pictures of what you cooked. I'd love to see it. Uh, looks like we got some more questions. So, One last question is how thick is each slice? Oh. Thickness is about, I don't know, half an inch or so. It's really up to you. If you like it thinner, cut, cut it thinner. If you like it thicker, make a thicker slice. That's how I like it. So, Any other questions? Okay. So, what you have to do is go to Guys Home Kitchen on Facebook, like my page, share this video. I would really appreciate that. Um, and if you weren't cooking, you were just watching, it's great. I mean, you got to learn. I want you to try this and tonight or tomorrow and let me know what you think because it's perfect. All right? Thank you guys very much and stay saucy.